Many older people develop medical crises and some of these take them to the emergency department and for some of the people who have to go to the emergency department they need to go uh, on for a little bit more time in a place called a medical assessment unit or an acute medical unit. Now some of the people who attend these medical in, uh, admission units or acute medical units can be discharged after a small amount of time um, back home. But what we have found, and in particularly Simon Conroy here found, is that the outcomes of these people were not as good as we'd hoped. Yeah, so we looked at this when I was working in Nottingham and um, we found that uh, patients that were on the acute medical unit that were being discharged home, about 50%, or so one in two of those, were readmitted uh, within a few months of going home from the acute medical unit. And we thought this was a really high number. Um, there was also quite high levels of mortality, so people were dying. So we wanted to look into their outcomes in a bit more detail. So we did a, an audit, followed up, um, I think it was about 50 or so patients over a period of time, uh, found that these high level, uh, poor outcomes, and looked at some of the things that were going on around the time that they were leaving the acute medical unit. Um, and noted that some of the things that we thought was, were important as geriatricians, so things like medication reviews or assessing falls risk and putting in measures to manage that, or in some cases even end-of-life care planning and other such really important issues, uh, weren't really being carried out in the way that you know, we would have expected. So we set about trying to work out if we can improve outcomes for this population. Well, having recognised the sorts of problems that Simon identified with the people and the deficiencies we saw, in the quality of the care, we thought that the thing to develop was a specialist geriatric medical intervention to try and fill those gaps. And it, Simon it was, in fact, who coined the phrase interface geriatrics to refer to that, because it covers the interface between the hospital and the community. And so these specialist geriatric uh, assessments were made by consultant geriatricians who saw the patients in the acute medical unit, but also were able to follow them up and see them at home. And this was allowing or, or ensuring that the problems that had been identified in the acute medical unit were actually dealt with in the community. And having set this service up, we thought the, first, the next thing we needed to do was to evaluate um, the effects of this, and that's why we designed the study. The method we used was a patient, individual patient randomised controlled trial um, comparing interface geriatrician intervention with usual care. The method we used was to identify patients who were on the acute medical unit who were over 70 years of age and who were being discharged from the unit and to make sure that we recruited just the patients who were the higher risk of adverse outcomes we recruited those patients who scored two or more on the identification of seniors at risk tool, which is a simple six question um, tool. The intervention was assessment by a physician who is a specialist in geriatrician medicine, who assessed the patients on the acute medical unit before discharged, and then he followed them up into the community. And the treatment he gave there might be any advice or support, it might be referrals to primary care services, whatever was required for the patients. Whereas the patients who were in the control group, they didn't see any specialist geriatrician at all. They had whatever treatment that the hospital decided that they needed. The main outcome measures was a single measure of days at how many days the patient spent at home. And this was measured so that it was to identify whether the patients had spent time in their own home, whether they'd been in residential care, whether they'd been readmitted to hospital, or unfortunately if some patients had died. So that was recorded as a single measure to give us that idea. We carried out the study in two centres, both in Nottingham and Leicester, um, and uh, we managed to recruit 433 people into the study, which was great, evenly divided between the intervention and the control groups. Um, the primary outcome that we were looking at was something which we call days at home, um, and basically everybody in the study was eligible for up to 90 days at home, so that was a three-month follow-up period. But if patients were readmitted to hospital during that time, and 54% of them were, so this was a, 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 a population in whom adverse events or poor outcomes were being experienced. So any readmissions back into hospital, we took that length of stay off for 90 days. 
any days in a new or increased care, set, care home setting, so if they went from a residential home to a nursing home or a new care home placement, that came off the score. And also for people that died, we took those days away from the total of 90 days at home. Um, and when we compared the two groups, we found that actually the days spent at home were very, very similar between both arms of the study. So in both groups, the mean days at home were about 80. And the confidence intervals uh, were quite uh, narrow with four, three or four days either side. Uh, so we didn't think there was, there was no statistically significant difference between the two study groups. We looked at a range of secondary outcome measures as well, not just the days at home. Uh, so we looked at uh, physical health, um, well-being, um, quality of life and other such measures. And all of those, again, showed no difference between the, t the two cohorts of patients. We also looked at the sicker group, so we did a subgroup analysis looking at people, for example, with high ISAR scores who were thought to be sicker and more vulnerable, and in that population as well there was no difference in, or no significant difference between any of the outcome measures. The conclusion we came to was that this was a genuinely neutral study. We recruited enough people, we followed the protocol, uh, and the outcomes were the same in both groups with very narrow confidence intervals. We looked for minor differences even in the high risk group and we couldn't find any. So it was a genuinely neutral study. What this research told us is that medical assessment units, acute medical units, remain a key focus or point of focus for frail older people with medical crises. But a single isolated intervention with a specialist geriatrician wasn't enough to make any difference. But we know from research in more comprehensive interventions, comprehensive geriatric assessment as it's known, really does improve outcomes. And so we've realised that we think that our intervention just wasn't comprehensive enough, it wasn't multidisciplinary enough and it wasn't integrated across the primary secondary care interface enough. And we think that is where the research now needs to go.